Smoking us out up here. What? Is Evan smoking again? No, he's farting. Oh, Evan. It's a couch potato. <laughs> I don't know what that guy eats, but his shit is pungent. Like his internal organs. <laughs> like that, I would imagine they're rotten. It's just brewed differently. Like uh-huh. Jeffrey Dahmer would have turned Evan away type of stuff. <laughs> like like he did. Evan would have stepped foot in his apartment, tooted like a little partial <laughs> slip. <Tooted. laughs> and he would have said, dude, get out. I don't care. I had some real foul plans with you, but get out. You're too dirty. <laughs> That's what you would have said. And Evan would be like, what? I thought we were going to hang out and take some pictures. <laughs> and you're like, no, get out. Get out. Get out. Oh, Should I have a beer Christ. for the road? No, get the hell out. All right. Okay. Uh, on that beautiful note, welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. Yeah, welcome back. It feels good to be back in the studio. Kind of was fun being out in Washington, but it's good to be back with the boys. Yeah, last podcast was legendary. I don't know if it was because I wasn't there or probably more so just because it was an awesome podcast, but it was it was fun listening to it as like a true listener. It was excellent. If you guys haven't checked it out, go go listen to it after this one. But It is fun to be back uh, with you guys. I was doing a little self-reflection. I was thinking about, remember when you were a kid and uh, you would you would mess up and you didn't quite want to come clean with your parents about what you did? Yeah. And you would just come oh, up yeah. with a little fib? I thought of, th- there was no way my dad even believed this for a second. And it, before you tell it, it was little, right? Was no. A little fib. No, it was, it was a big fib, dude. I <laughs> fucked up for sure. Okay. It was right as we just started to like drink back when we were a little younger. Definitely. 13, 14. No, we're not that young. But you were there. I remember. We smoked a cigar outside of his house. What? Hey, you remember that? Outside of... You uh, two. Yeah. Smoking a cigar. Okay. Yeah, and we like hid behind the garage. Like it was a big deal for us. Okay. Anyway, we went to this house party and I, you know, drove my car over there, my beloved Scion TC, and we parked in the ditch outside of the house party. Yeah. Oh. And in some point in that evening... Someone backed up and dented the side of my door and like mangled the side of the door. So I'm like, we come out in the morning and I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? And I came back and I was like, well, what happened to your car? And I went, oh, me and the guys, we went to Cherry Berry in a movie and someone backed out and ran into the side of my car. I was getting drunk at a house party. I told my dad I was at Cherry Berry. (laughs) So right. then what? Just you just had your insurance company pay for it? Uh, no, I think we did out of pocket. I think wow, because it was I mean technically like a hit and run. Mm-hmm. You know, they left the party, backed into your shit. Yeah, I thought you left. were gonna tell some story like he was totally on to you. Like no. this dude is lying. No, Ryan just out of but this. I'm gonna just give it. Well, I mean that was such a pretty minimal fib. Right, like I figured I, there's oh, so a spot a where you're fit. gonna look no. like really stupid. No, I never have told him that. So if he's listening, this will be the moment that he knows. He'd be like, "I knew you didn't go to fucking Cherry Berry." Can I tell you something? Yeah, yeah, it was me. I, I was buzzing on that cigar. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you were like 14. Yeah, I was you like, couldn't like, even what drive would you yet. Have even hit him in. But oh, you were not driving. Are you actually it? lying? Because I wish that was true. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That, that would amazing. be quite How the guy. Clean. I, I I held that in. I didn't even have my driver's license yet, but I was buzzing so hard I knew I needed to go home. (laughs) Get this man his keys. I had a friend, and I guess the only time I can think of where I was fibbing, and it was very obvious that I was You were good at telling the truth. I wasn't. uh, Was I was with my friend, Sean, and he was such a troublemaker. (laughs) And it was like, we're in the ninth grade. He had his license, and we were buzzing around. And like he'd be like, let's hang out, and he'd come pick me up. And we just cruise around town. Then we'd like go to Walmart and like just me and him. And like he would like just do some dumb shit and I'd just be tagged along. Anyways, we like pull into his his house and his dad was a really nice guy, but like he was smart. And I he was actually, I think he was in the Marines at one point. He's like a pretty successful guy. Can't remember what he did. Something in software. But he was a smart dude. Like he could look you in the in the eye and like know if you're, you're lying. Bullshitting. So we pull up. And, and he goes, make sure you don't tell my dad that we went to Walmart. Don't tell my dad that we went to Walmart. To I'm Walmart? Like, like you, like, you weren't supposed to be at Walmart? I don't know. Apparently not. <laughs> and, like, we hop out, and his dad's in the parking lot, uh, or in his driveway, and uh, Sean runs in and leaves me just out to dry. And his dad goes, so, Siege, what were you guys up to? And I was like, not at Walmart. <laughs> uh, 
Target, just driving around. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what I said. I like said maybe we went and got ice cream or something. Like, and he goes, "Really? You sure about that?" I'm like, "Uh, uh, you know, like I'm at that point backtracking in my tracks." And he goes, "I think you guys went to Walmart." <laughs> no. What? No, like, he had to have had some Walmart. tracking device on him. Now that I look back on it, but I just held true to my guns, like I always do. And I was like. No, no. He just <laughs> just sat there looking at me like this kid is a real idiot. But I was just hung out to drive by his idiot son, which we were both idiots. But uh, at least at that time, and uh, he's not anymore. I still am. But yeah, that, that was a pretty embarrassing moment. Just being caught at that age, just in a fucking lie. In a lie. But I I held true. Or yeah, almost I couldn't like- have got. Out. I'm pretty sure I was sweating. I just love he was like a stern goat dude. The series of events there when you started telling that story, Ryan goes. Yeah, see, you, you really have always been good at telling the truth. <laughs> and then it's like, normally did you, you go to Walmart? Yeah, normally to your you, parents. Yeah. Well, fuck did you I, go to Walmart? I didn't see no. what the problem with going to Walmart was, but apparently he didn't want it, want me telling his dad that we were at Walmart. I'm like, dude, we didn't even do anything bad. It's funny how like you are, have always told the truth uh, with your parents and, and everything like that, but like you and I could bullshit somebody so easy, but it's like, it's, it, we're putting like two completely different positions where like, I'm probably still not a very good liar, but like, I'm a really good bullshitter. Yeah. If I'm <laughs> messing with someone, I couldn't like make them believe that we just got back from Russia. <laughs> yeah. We were in Russia, like filming this video with that Russian YouTuber. You probably don't know yet. You know, we would like just make this whole thing up. FPS Russia. I, I've yeah. never really looked at that as like lying. It's like, almost I, I like never like feel bad though. about it. It's like ridiculous. It's so ridiculous because you're trying to see when, when you and I do that, when we're messing with people, it's more of us. It's not us lying. It's us trying to see how far oh, we can, can stretch how this can story get. and make it seem so far fetched, but have them still believing us in a way, kind of making them seem stupid. And then we just, it's like an inside joke. Right. Sometimes and you we'll guys pick up, we'll pick up on it immediately. If we can kind of oh, push yeah. our limits with somebody like, um, a couple videos or a while back, uh, Gavin, the three wheeler kid came up and we found out kid. basically in the first, like, 15 minutes that this dude was so gullible. Like he would believe anything. <laughs> well, he and had no so, reason not to believe us. Right. So naturally me and CJ are just like instant bullshitting. Like, yeah, it got to the point where we well, had to you, like, you left and we made up this whole elaborate story. Like, Oh yeah, Ryan. Psh. Yeah. He's not allowed to hang out with us if we're not like working, like filming. <laughs> what? Why? Well, his girl, man, she doesn't like us. He's like, what? And he still dates her? We're like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. He just loves her. And, like, we were just going on and on, and we stretched it so far. And then you came back, and you were like, I got to go home. Like, I got dinner with my girl. And Gavin, like, took his hat off, and he's like, Jesus. Dude, come on. I'm here from Colorado. That's why I was, hey. remember him busting my chops yeah, about that. Come and on, I was like, bro. Dude, just what? have a couple beers. We're like, yeah, he's, like, not allowed to drink or nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure if we actually ever cleared that up with him. No, we did. We uh, did. That, like, we did? The next day. Okay. We yeah, let him believe it go. for a whole night, Because there is a lot of things where we just, like, <laughs> let him go. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd we also convinced them that you were a liberal. 90%. Yeah, you guys always do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in such a pinch. I'm like, I'm not. And then they're like, no, oh, geez, it's okay, man. Just he like, believed it. No one ever second guess. They go, yeah, I could see it. <laughs> they always say that. <laughs> I ain't. Not saying there's anything wrong. Like, I'm not going to discriminate against anything, but, but like, it's funny to say Ryan is. <laughs> like, circling back, I mean, I don't know if this is necessarily a good thing, but 90% of the time when you guys are trolling, it's like all made up, right? You know, like, mm-hmm. The only thing that's not made up is that you're using a real person as as your example. And it's super fun to be on the inside of it, but when you're on the outside of it, it sucks. Because you because the outside outside as as But you don't as, even know what's going on. Well, hold up. Outside as in you're the one being trolled, or outside as in you're watching us do our thing on somebody else, unsuspecting. A bit of both. Mainly either when you are on the outside of the troll, when like maybe I know I'm being trolled, which because now I finally picked up on that and that really sucks. Uh, or when you're on the outside of it and someone is being trolled and you're just like, dude, I, it's not true. Or you're like, you just want to stop. Yeah. Stop you're your pretty good about not intervening though. But this little weasel, <laughs> I'm sorry. I cut you off Mike, but yeah, instantly, Oh, uh, instantly. Like basically they could have the best troll in the world going and I'll probably ruin it in about a second without even trying. I'm just that dumb. 
No, I think you get some kind of like <laughs> no. enjoyment out of out just of ruining it. I would yeah. say like, uh, part, like you get some you, of them. It I, makes you happy knowing that me and CJ. I think your guys is really dumb ones. I do. Well, those it, are the best. Those are the ones that like ones shouldn't that be believable. Those, those are the, are the ones, ones that, are that are so outlandish. We're stretching it like but, yeah. super far. No, and that's what that's what I'm saying. It's like it. It's all perspective. I mean, and we've talked <laughs> about this before. But when you convinced Greta that I like didn't have a bank account, oh, I went. That's the best. That is a one good of my one. favorite. That's such a good one. I went along with it for two weeks. Thank it's like you. how Dude. long? Well, that yeah. that Thank one's you. pretty harmless. Yeah. That's funny. But, I convinced my girlfriend that Mike didn't believe in bank accounts because <laughs> he had a bunch of cash. Because he had a bunch of cash. Because he used to be a bartender, so he, he had like two hundred bucks in cash next to his bed. More and than I was that. like, <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't believe in bank accounts. I have to pay him. It. Oh. Mark, Mark, our buddy Mark, we bought him the watch. He still believes that actually, so he might be listening really? to this. Wow. Right? Like, oh, hey, my favorite part five years also, later when they both went. Doesn't his mom work at a bank? That's yeah, yeah that's like, kind of. Yeah, he saw the he inner learned. workings of it. Yeah. And he was like, I don't trust oh. the system. Well, no, and then she asked me that, and then I was like, Yeah, she does. <laughs> You're not dumb. She works at a bank, and I use a bank. There's so ninety percent of the time you're just pulling stuff out of your ass and. You're really good at p- quite literally piling so much shit over the line <laughs> that you you don't you don't Can't know. Sift through you know it. You don't I mean? even want to dig in. So if there is something that it's like someone's being fish, I mean, like it's a legitimate thing someone's being fishy about. But if you guys uh, uh, Power Ranger up together <laughs> and start piling shit on the lie, it's gone, dude. I mean, it's just it's impressive. <laughs> a little scary, but it's impressive. Dude, it's truly one of my favorite things to do. That's what I mean. It's really you guys, fun to do. everyone knows that you two are cousins, but like, I mean. No, you, I don't think everyone knows that. Uh, I, should, I should say. I almost hope everyone, everyone doesn't know that. But I think that. that's that's where the, dyna- the dynamics come from. I'm kidding. Like well, They're connected. Let yeah. Me, let like me hear trees. some of your guys' fibs. I want to, like, what's a good fib? I know. Dude, I was trying to think while you were telling a your juicy story. story. I got one more good one. So... In the ninth grade, when I like, if you were a hockey player, you go into high school. It was like this big thing that all the older kids chewed. So me and my buddy, will blank his name, uh, we go and get chew, which was very accessible as like fifteen. You and get that shit. We're like twenty-one now, chewing it, dipping it, whatever, and and it went fine. We must have got like some weak shit, and then we went and did it the next week and got some more. And it was right after hockey practice, and I put that thing in. Holy shit. I started buzzing so hard that I threw up all over the parking lot. He had to like drive me home. I'm like throwing up out the window. I get home. My parents are like, what the hell what was what happened to you? I'm like, oh, I just ate bad Taco Bell, bad Taco Bell. And like just went to bed. CJ's got dip stuck in his teeth and shit. Yeah. And I never chewed ever since then. Good for you. Which was honestly probably. <laughs> That's like the thing. best thing. That's like, I Getting think sick off of that shit right away. The one time I tried it too, or like the Zin, the uh, pouch thing. Was buzzing, start throwing no up shit, everywhere. You're supposed to, yeah, that's good. But I was like buzzing way too hard. Like I was started like hallucinating. I was buzzing so hard at the time. I felt like a pussy, but like realistically, best thing because a lot of those guys are still addicted to it. And now it's like really not that cool if you're like I'm, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, also, I mean nowadays, same. Th- I did the exact same thing too with like the big vapes, like the big rig vapes, <laughs> the, mods. the clouds. When mods. we were in the college house, uh, the, like Jake. Ken, I mean, maybe you. I, I think at the time it was it was Justin, myself, sure. Ryan. Justin, it was myself, yeah. Ryan, Jake, Justin, and you. Well, I you never guys were always owned, ripping these was a big. That might be the least with, like, cool the thing you huge could do. clouds, right? And <laughs> I think like I, was, a dweeb. I was doing it for maybe five days, and then I was like <sighs> seeing how much I could like do. Well, I was right, like to buzz, and, and then I know, started just dude to throwing up everywhere, and I have not done it since. Like I remember, of course, this is like Jake's idea, but I mean, we're all participating. He goes. Let's just pass it around and take like the biggest rips we can until something happens. That's what like no joke. Choice. What we oh, did. Okay, well I found out what happened. Wait, do and you then, guys remember when when Ken had it? Oh, dude, that might be the funniest thing that has ever happened to date. <laughs> that has never seen the internet. The internet hasn't. Well, he no, made we such a, a, we he freaked fil- out so no, bad that it, I deleted it. Had, yeah, tell, tell the story. Tell the story. Oh, I thought we already told this. Are you sure Did we, we haven't told this? I, Did we? I'm, Ken's I, like, I we told it. All right, long story short, Ken had those vapes where you had to put the juice in. I ordered dog shit flavored vape juice, <laughs> put it in his vape. He came home, sucked that thing, and immediately knew we did something to it. Came up like freaking out like, 
like very mad and we all were laughing and then he finally asked what we did to his vape and we said it's dog shit and he thought we put literal dog shit like like some poop in his vape and he immediately yelled do you know how unsanitary that is and chucked the vape at me and uh, luckily he missed and then i had to buy him a new vape <laughs> Remember when we went to the store? What you told the vape guy running? Yeah, like the and then clerk? I had I like went in. I didn't know what I was buying. I was like, I like I like thought it was funny. I'm and like, they this guy's gonna dumb. think it's funny. Yeah. I like tell him the whole prank. So anyway, so I need to get a vape, but I don't know like what I need to get. But so anyways, long story. I tell him the whole story, and he goes, "That's not funny." <laughs> I learned real quick. You don't mess with a vapor's vape. He didn't think it was funny at all. He was not amused at all. It was such a big deal. That I I don't know why, but I like actually got scared at how bad <laughs> Ken was. That I deleted all the video. Really, I just deleted the snaps. I deleted. I, it was I don't a know different why. time. It I don't was, know why I was so scared. It was an early. It was time. easily the top three maddest I've ever seen him. Luck, yeah. Luckily, I guess the that you deleted all of it. Luckily, that scenario lives rent free in my head yeah, yeah. it oh was like God. upstairs in the loft in my room and we were yeah yeah i, 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 I remember it like it was yesterday yeah. yeah yeah and how could you forget it really you, yeah he was really mad oh man <laughs> i think you know how you ever heard like uh that oh i've never had an original thought you know you see tiktoks that are like relatable and then you're like damn i do that i thought i thought i was the only one or whatever I think I had an original like idea that uh, no one's ever done. <laughs> I think. Okay. So uh, okay. you sure you want to say it right now? <laughs> yeah, because I I did it already. Oh. I didn't. I don't have the results of. It's like a social experiment. I don't know what you'd call it, but I'm in the the urinal at TJ's and you know a couple other different bars too. But I'm in the urinal and I was like, oh, man, these this this one particularly was a little bit dirty. And then I was Dude, like, you got to spit this out. You're in the urinals at TJ's. It's yeah. dirty. And so then yeah. I was like, and you know how when you get uh, piss on the toilet rim of a normal toilet, if you're courteous, maybe not in a public restroom, sometimes they're so grody you don't want to do it, but you wipe it off because you're courteous. Of course. What if you put a roll of toilet paper in the urinal and just see what people do? So I ordered. Wait, wait, wait hold up. So I, in the urinal? No, not in the urinal, but like, you know, there's stalls. If it's only if there's a stall next to you. Oh, like on so, top of the urinal. No. Just like urinals here, stalls, like there's a divider. So I got these adhesive toilet paper rolls and I like I put one on there and put a toilet paper roll on it. <laughs> Never saw what people thought of it, but I just wanted like I put the toilet paper roll on there. I'm like, I bet people are like pissing. They're like, am I supposed to Wipe this Wipe. down after I'm done. <laughs> oh, man. This is that. That's fucking yeah. funny, dude. You should have put some fake shit in there, too. That'd be, that'd be okay. I'm liking where that's going, too. Kind of like bring it even further. I like both sides of it. Because I've been like, what? There, you know, there's like such a thing. So many, are we supposed to take a dump? Again? Yeah, yeah. There's like such a thing as like a social experiment or a prank where you really never get the reactions of, which is kind of like that. It'd but be yeah, funny if you waited until the love of the you game. You waited until someone came in and then you were like pulling your pants up and facing the wrong way, like as if you just did it. But then, and you then, go, then they, howdy. You make it like, yeah, really obvious that like, you were shitting howdy. in the urinal, but then they see the toilet paper roll and they're like, mm mm. So hold up. You have done it? Yeah. And you even brought toilet paper over there? Uh, well, no, I took one out of there. Yeah, like I, I didn't have toilet paper, but I had the thing, which was kind of dumb. But <laughs> can you imagine I, how confused the worker were? That's worker like, oh, was especially when workers. they like, went in to clean it that night, and they were so, like, "Hey, uh, Jennifer, um, when did we start putting yeah. uh, like the should little I, toilet paper holder adhesive on the? Should I reload that, or we go back in? Yeah, the the roll is empty. But I'm basically just gonna hit all the local bar and restaurants. <laughs> The just toilet random. paper bandit. Yeah. So I guess now people know, but that is that that's a pretty original idea, Mike. I guess that was the moral of the story. As funny. dumb as it is, like, has anyone ever done that ever? Put a toilet paper roll in a urinal. I <laughs> haven't I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. So I just Congrats, just, Mike. You thanks. did it, dude. Thanks. You pioneered something. <laughs> Man, it feels good to be a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> dude, did you guys see those? It, I saw it all over TikTok, but those fishermen that rigged that tournament mm, and weights. put lead weights and like fish fillets inside of those fish, 
Yeah. In like a tournament. Like they were playing. Well, or multiple. Playing. I mean, over, I don't know how long it was, but they said multiple tournaments. Oh, really? So yeah. they were like serial Well, as in like. Because yeah, they, they must get money, I'm assuming. It happened, and then they were like, they have no way of proving it, but they were like, these guys had to have done it at least They're one just other, like constant winners. Yeah, I mean, if they you won get so much. cheating and you're, you know, one time they're going to second guess all your but other Yeah, wins. what was the how, how do they figure it out? Well, they, I haven't seen the video. How okay. do they figure it out? I'll, I'll pull you it should, up. Yeah. But they literally, they, it was kind of aggressive. They the way that the guy men. like rips. Yeah. Full grown men all in this big fishing tournament. Dude, but my favorite, fishermen do not yeah, fuck the, around. This is no. the best part. Uh, it, is the guy is just standing there watching the guy very aggressively like rip stuff out of this fish. And he's just standing there like completely neutral expression. There's a whole crowd of people yelling at him. Like, I thought there was a no, fight. The, was there a fight? The, uh, I was saying the best maybe. part is like before they started exposing him or maybe as they were exposing him, uh, the authorities or whoever's running the thing was like, don't like hurt him because people were basically like, yep, we knew it. You want to get punched in the face? <laughs> like they're getting in line basically well, to like. Was this like a paid event? Yeah, I like, mean, like the I think champion was, won money or what would they win? I'm not sure about this, but I did see that these guys had won like over two hundred thousand dollars in fishing Holy tournaments. Holy yeah. crap. So pretty big. fishing tournaments. Oh, so they were like the big dogs and yeah. then everyone found out yeah. that they were damn. What? I think quite the scheme. I've got, got on going. airplay. Dude, watch these guys. That's a dude? That's the dude. Look yeah. how this is his face the entire time. Look, big. I think those are uh, either one or two pound lead balls. He's just standing there like this. He's just like, yep, oh, make sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we need to file a police report? What? People are just yelling. A Yo, police report? Shit. Yeah. Every tournament you won! Look at how aggressively he rips the weight out of these fish. He's fucking just slain. Dude, like everyone is riled up. For good reason, but... Wait, yeah. wait did you hear the people in the background? Yeah. Okay, the people in the background are the, the best, best part. part. Is that a filet? Yeah, they were stuffing other, other fillets. fillets. He's just standing there just like this. Why didn't he just leave? I don't Dude, know. I don't even know. Kill the caps! He's just standing right there. Talk about embarrassing. Everybody listen to me right now. Jake, I want you to leave. I don't want anybody to touch these guys. I want you to leave. to jail. Put this guy in jail. I, th th that is a... I think that is illegal. I mean, to be fair, he is rigging a yeah, tournament. Yeah, he's rigging like, a tournament. It's a yeah. pretty big deal. And, and I guess not to mention, like... a. A tournament with serious winnings on the line. Holy shit. Okay, so. And they, I mean, and the, that's the crazy part. They were blatantly cheating all their fish. We all fucking knew it. Couldn't they just look at the fish and be like, there's no way this thing weighs this much? That's what I would think. It must just be that tight of a race, you know, like yeah. a, a pound or two either way. Look, look at the dude in the flip flops. Okay, yeah. That's a walleye. He's it's cooked and everything. <laughs> yeah. Still warm. What happened to the guys? <laughs> to be honest, I don't. I actually don't. I don't know what. Why does he up sit there and just watch? Well, he's just like watching. he's like a five-year-old kid. Hey. Look up. Look up. Uh, what was his last name? Dude, Dude, there's no way this guy's social media after this. He deleted everything. <sighs> just look up like his uh, like a news article. Okay, what happened to walleye cheaters? Boat and trailer seized. Not wow. surprised because that's apparently what they won. They won oh. in one of their tournaments. They won a boat and trailer. And I think they seized it. They came and without. Took it. The, I don't know if that was the winning for that one, but they seized it because it was a winning for a previous tournament. And they were like, "We can't. You can't have this." Yeah. Knowing what. Yeah, you cheat yeah. one time, and even if the rest of them were all credible, dude, it's I mean, not a good look. Mm -mm. Is well, moral of the story here. This is incredibly entertaining. Is it okay? I mean, absolutely not. But like, what do you expect? I guess it's like. It's a Yo. fishing tournament that, like, what if the dude was just, what if he wasn't even that big of a fisherman and he was just like, it's, fu I learned how to cheat in the fishing tournaments and then. That's like, funny. Yeah. Um, we, we were actually thinking about doing a bit where we went and, like, infiltrated a fishing tournament 
And then we went and just like found out who the most like oh hardo gosh. guys were. And then we're we went fuck with them. And yeah. we like mess with them, but like butt our boats like right up next to them <laughs> and start casting in the exact same spot. I don't know. I've never been in a fishing tournament, but I can't imagine. I think they'd that try they'd to fight be us, too stoked dude. About most, that. At mm. least there'd be someone there that would if we start. Oh, dude, after watching that video, yeah, they would be hot. Maybe it's a little bit different around here. Was that local? Or like I where was, was, was that in Minnesota? Erie. You're trying Lake to like oh, Lake Erie? provide for your family, make some money. You're doing this as a professional. You're dedicating your whole life to this craft. And then these guys are coming in and cheating it, taking basically winnings from you. What right. I did see is they'd accumulated several hundred thousand dollars worth of prize. But I, nothing yet. No charges, Damn. nothing like that that I've seen. Someone. I don't know if there's anything them. illegal about that, though. No, you're rigging a tournament. Like, it's yeah, for I, sure got to be illegal. It's like, it'd be like, I mean, I feel like you. Yeah. Would you get in legal trouble if you like rigged a golf I think you could somehow? get banned. Yeah. Like it's like cheating in a football game. You, you don't go to jail. Yeah, true, there's fines, but you don't go to jail. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's gotta be Yeah, the people in the back put them in jail. I, I mean, don't know. I feel like the DNR would get involved of uh, in, of some sort in that. Like that I, yeah. I feel like yeah. yeah, I bet they would. I don't think the DNR have anything to do with tournament fishing. Mm-hmm. I have to dude. Are you serious? <laughs> they have to. You think they're like the fucking ref or what? No, I but I, I feel like <laughs> they, they have some like, kind of involvement. They call the DNR in, the, in a situation put... like that. I doubt it's like the cops. I don't know what the DNR would be. Well, involved I guess in it's, it's interesting well, it's unless it's like a like some kind of abuse of they are how much fish you norm. can take or like shoving them down their throat. Maybe they could get like maybe some kind of inhumane type of thing. But yeah, fish do kind of get to go by that. But there's not many rights for fish. Not saying there should be. Yeah. But I think also, there's, there's really not, you know. <laughs> there's really, you know I, what? Listen, man, I've already done it for the turtles. I can't do any more. Yeah, true. Dude, uh, I asked Ryan before this podcast if he had any fresh idiots of the week, and you said no. However, those, those were guys, your idiots of the week. Those guys might have taken it. Those, for sure. Those were our idiots of the week, Dude, man. I bet they're getting roasted oh. every which way. Yeah, I can't yeah, be Dude, good. we're not even in the fishing we're not, game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, their wife's we're probably roasting left them. Because they're like, I I married you because I thought you were a good fisherman. <laughs> yeah. I'm, That'd be know. a sad truth to I find out. I bet they weren't telling they weren't telling their wives that they were putting lead balls in the fish. I, to, I, yeah, Because obviously it. being a good fisherman is what gets you the girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. I'd imagine. What do you mean you imagine? It's the truth. I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fisherman. Then again, I, I don't have chicks flocking, so maybe that's why. <laughs> you yeah. got to get out. Start casting some rods and stuff. Shit. Or reels. Casting reels. Um, okay. I uh, feel uh, like uh, I feel like enough time has passed. The waters are calm again. Can we tell the story of when we got fined with our dirt bike track? Ooh. Oh. I think so, but I think it, I, as long as we just tell I mean, the story, we, we did, we did wrap it up. Okay. So I think, I think we're good. All right. Okay. So beginning of June, we had this dirt bike track built over on our property and we had rich come out and we basically just told him, all right, we want a, a bunch of jumps, but nothing like too extreme, you know, so we can hit it on all these different things. And he's like, all right, I got it. And we're like, Oh, also we want a pond. And he's like, okay, great. Well, then we come back, like, a, the next day after he started. He's basically, like, moving the earth <laughs> and a yeah. lot of it. Like, basically mm -hmm. just reconstructing the entire property. And we're like, oh, shit, okay, he's, like, doing a lot. Well, then he moves, builds the track, builds the pond, ended up just being, like, moving a lot more dirt than we thought. But we were like, uh, well, about two weeks passes by. We get it was finished. After it's finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get a call from the county saying, um, we had a local complaint about your guys' track. Can we come on out and check it out? So the county comes out. They look at it. Kind of tell us, like, all right. Um, this was like the building codes people. Right. Well, they first and foremost said, do you have a permit? We said, no. you know, long story short, no. We didn't know. I didn't, didn't know. know. I didn't we know. needed one. I didn't know. I don't know. I as far as I knew we if you were going to build, wrong. you had to have right. a permit. Because yeah. we didn't, didn't put up pushing some dirt, around, dirt. Some We didn't put up any actually built actual buildings. So long story short, we apply for the permit. Then uh, they give us the permit and everything, and we're like, okay, great. About two weeks goes by. Ryan gets a call. Hey, uh, so and so from the MPCA. It's MPCA, right? MNPCA. Yeah. No, M no, it's MPCA. MPCA. Minnesota yeah. Pollution Control. MN. 
No, it's MPCA. Oh, MPCA. Sorry. Okay. Hey, so and so from the MPCA, um, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Agency. Yes. Uh, we had a complaint about your guys' dirt bike track from somebody in the area. Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah, we can't tell you who. We're like, of course. And uh, can we come out and check out uh, what you guys have there? So they come out, and at this point, like, basically the entire thing was, like, grown back over with grass, and uh, we had, like, the pond, so it was kind of, like, holding all the water from, like, the rain and everything. We thought it was, like... Pretty solid. Yeah, we thought it was pretty solid, right? And then... They basically inform us of these certain things that if you move over an, I believe an acre, or you disrupt Disturb an acre, or over an acre of land, then you have to have these different permits and things. Again, we had no idea. If you guys are watching this and you plan on like building a dirt bike track or doing anything in Minnesota, uh, use us as an example here. But let me pull up our violations. There was five well, of and them, before, right? Sure wait, 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 wait. But before. You say that. I just, the one thing that was being kind of doomed upon us with, over the phone call was said exactly three times in a brief phone call, this could be a $10,000 per day or per fine per day. And, yeah. and that was said three times. And we're like, oh, why did you, like, scary. Holy we were like looking hell. at multiple hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Well, no, wait, just wait, just wait. So the first one, hire an individual trained in SWPPP development um, so that's rainwater. Basically, like, it's an engineer comes out and tells you where, what you've moved, where the water is going to go. Got it. So that's the first one. Uh, submit a complete application to obtain coverage under the permit for the site. So get a permit for it. Uh, stabilize the exposed soil of the interior of the track. So basically anything that didn't have grass growing on it uh, was supposed to be stabilized with like hydro seed, hydro seed or um, straw, straw, yeah, blankets. something like that. So that was a third, uh, and then have a trained individual come out every seven days uh, or within twenty four hours of a rainfall, and then obtain a trained individual for overseeing the implications of and revising uh, the amended amendments of the SWPPP and individuals performing the inspection. So basically, somebody to come out and make sure. That everything was good. Everything is getting fixed, right? So five violations. And each violation could have been $10,000 a day. So $50,000 a day since the start of construction. And I calculated out it was like one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. So six weeks. So six weeks times. It's like millions of dollars just for building a <clears throat> dirt bike track on your field. 50,000 times. My calculation... Two point one million dollars. Two point one million. Two point one million dollars was. We kind of knew that odds are it wasn't going to be a worst case scenario situation, but we all sat there together, quietly staring at each other, and went, "Did we just have a two point one million dollar fuck up?" Like it was, it was scary. Yeah, it was I very know. scary. If it was one percent of that, that was twenty one thousand dollars. We're like, "Geez, that's yeah. an expensive dirt bike track." So we were scared. You know, like when. Yeah, when they peg uh, or whatever, let's say you get caught smoking weed and they say that could be up to five years in jail. It's it never actually that much. It just never really is. I mean, sometimes. So, but they kept saying it. They came out to inspect the land and they kept throwing this $10,000 per day. So it was ingrained in our heads. And then we sat down and went, why'd they say that so much? Hey guys, quick break in today's podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Manscaped. Michael Myers sure is scary, but the last thing you need to be is hairy this Halloween. Lucky our friends at Manscaped launched their fourth generation performance package to make sure your pumpkins get the ultimate carving experience this fall. Join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code wide open. Make the right call this spooky season. It's trick or trim. I truly couldn't live without my Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Before Manscaped, trimming down below was a pain, and grabbing a corded trimmer that might actually shave off more than I planned for created stress that honestly prevented me from doing any manscaping, and that was definitely not the right move. Have you guys ever tried to trim your package and turned it into a Freddy Krueger film? Well, luckily, Manscaped is here to save the day and make sure you're feeling your best. Unlock your confidence with the Performance Package 4.0. Inside, you'll find the holy grail of men's grooming items. They've made it easy for you to upgrade your grooming routine. Their finely tuned products feature a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. 
The lawnmower 4.0 is easily the greatest ball trimmer on the planet. And did I mention it's waterproof too? Easily add this to your shower routine. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker, a total game changer to your men's hygiene arsenal. The Weed Whacker is a nose and ear hair trimmer that provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. But don't forget to seal the deal with Manscaped's liquid formulations. Their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner will make sure your pumpkins stay fresh. Trust me when I say this, fellas, your balls will thank you. Manscaped also just launched their new body buffer. This 100% antibacterial body scrubber is just what you need to keep you fresh and clean this Halloween. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag. Also, if you haven't cut your nails recently and you're looking like Wolverine, be sure to check out the Shears 2.0 Nail Kit. All right, fellas, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code wide open at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code wide open at manscaped.com. Thanks, Manscaped. Back to the podcast. <laughs> Fine per day thing? Yeah, it was it was a like a terrifying time. We were all hoping, like, okay, well, if we're like compliant and we get everything fixed super fast, maybe they'll be lenient. But like, what is lenient? 10% of that is still what? Well, 10% would have been 200000 $200,000. So anyway, they come out, they give us all these things and they, you know, tell us the, the issues, the fines. And then it went all right. Right. Yeah. It, the guy was super nice about it too. And, and obviously he could tell like we weren't doing we it intentionally and it wasn't like our third violation yeah. of doing yeah. it. And we were like, That's look, good. we just wanted to build a dirt bike track. We've never built anything ever. We've never moved this much dirt before. Uh, we didn't. No, we no. didn't even do yeah, it. We, really, we, didn't, we no. didn't know. Yeah, it'd be one thing too if we were to hire like a professional oh. team because usually a, someone like professional, they like a it. construction crew, they would at they least have to know it. about that. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So we were just like, look, we just had a buddy come out, kind of explained it to him. But yeah, they like came back and like I think they said that again like a couple times. Like, well, <sighs> just letting you know, like this is what it could be. But if you're like compliant, uh, we'll take that into consideration. So we're like bugging about it for a, basically a month. We get everything done super fast or as quick as we can. And we're dealing with other contractors for like hydro seed too. And they're all busy. And we're like, look, we got to get this done done ASAP fast. So we did everything that they needed. And then like a month goes by and we're just hoping, okay, please, 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 you know, take all that into consideration. And then they came back and I think they fined us what? $700? No, it was like 1700 Oh, was okay. it? Yeah. Still. But that was pretty nice of them. I Still. think they were. Yeah. They, you yeah. Know, I think obviously they, they got a job to do the and they understood that it was a mistake oh, yeah. on our yeah. part. We didn't, we literally didn't know what we were doing and uh, we learned a lesson from it and, you know, they didn't freaking Be pulling basically end our lives. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> yeah, some, I think sometimes the beauty was nice of, of like thought. being, I mean, I hate to call ourselves clueless, but being clueless enough where you don't even have to lie. You know, you, you didn't actually, you didn't ever for one second consciously like commit or walk over someone's rules or laws. Like, I mean, we just didn't know. Yeah. If we went and like built a, a housing development out there, I'd be like, yeah, I guess I can see how we'd probably have to do some planning. Yeah. But, but for, for, you know, a bunch of basically, since most of our jumps are tabletops, a bunch of piles of dirt, yeah. the pond got pretty extensive, but yeah, we just didn't know. I guess it goes down to. Who's our weasel of a neighbor? I know. Calling dude. us into the county, and then when like the track doesn't get dozed the next day, they're like, all right. Who's next? Who's next? Who else could we call them into? And the worst part is, so they have to remain anonymous, but like we had to pay, actually the most expensive part was paying all the contractors to come out and spray the hydro seed and lay the straw tarp and all that stuff. Like that, that shit was certified. like four grand. So it's kind of bullshit that someone can complain go anonymous when they cost you that type of money it is also interesting like who knows what the mpca is i didn't and to call them right someone must have told them to call them or something but but i'm glad we're good now i mean we have a we use that track like every week yeah so good like literally like once or twice a week probably yeah so it's not that extensive to really be complaining about Oh, I mean, I'm not complaining. I just I, I, no, no, I I'm was. Saying the neighbors. I was though. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, damn. Quite a lesson learned for sure. Yeah, I mean, always check with your local permits. Oh, now that, I know I want to put in an approach. We got to get a permit for that too. <laughs> you're right. We do. Yeah, I was like, right. You can't. You probably can't just build an approach in a nope. ditch. No. 
camp. It's so easy to get a permit too. And it's like relatively cheap for what it could be if you don't get the permit and then they hit you with the fine too. Yeah. I feel like most of the time, if you're proactive on it again, we've never had to be proactive with it. in our fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, another thing I was like, so when all that was happening, I guess moral of the story is like it all, it brought us all down. You know, we were all just bummed. It's like that happens. Oh, and then you get this impending, like, what is going to be our punishment? And it definitely, like, slows us down a little bit and makes us way more apprehensive, which sucks. Goes back to what I said in the beginning, dude. Knowing you're in trouble is the fucking worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the worst. Yeah, and it causes you to act differently. Act for differently. Sure. Mm. Yeah, it's even not necessarily, like, the punishment most of the time. It's just knowing you It's just up. the The guilt. The it's guilt. The guilt. And the headache of dealing with it and how long does it like loom over you? Another kind of depressing news. Oh. oh. Uh, kind of became a pull tabs addict. Oh, that is sad to hear. Are you down bad? Uh, I've had a couple wins that have brought me back up, but I don't know what came over me. I don't either. I was, Actually, I I'll, saw tell the snaps. You, I'll tell you exactly what came over me. <laughs> me and Ken and CJ were out to dinner the other day. And me and Ken, I don't know why, but we were like, let's just go in like 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Right. And then next thing you know, we're both in like 200 bucks. Didn't pull a single winner. CJ's CJ's waiting for us to be done so that he can go (laughs) in in. on it. And we weren't going to, I wasn't going to let that happen. You know, him steal our money like that. So we can't learn that from Ken. Yeah. That's Ken's motive. And he wins a lot. He waits till you're done. Well, yeah, uh, sometimes, but yeah, he once he sees that you're done playing, he goes in if you didn't win, and he cleans up. Polite. Poli- what is polite, polite about? I'd that? say that's the polite way to do it. He waits, but one time there was a little bit of blurred line. That's why it was like, all right, I'm gonna jump in on this. And hmm. then it's usually other people that are like, well, we weren't like done for the night. Well, then how does yeah. that work? Yeah. Well, if you don't know him, then there's no such thing. Right. But it's called jump in the box. Is that what someone did to you? Uh. No, no, I just self sabotage uh-huh. and just, just lost it all myself. Yeah. yeah, but then me and Tint were at dinner the next night, and I thought there's no way that I could lose two nights in a row, you know, well, like any good gambler. I think you're right about that since you're hanging with Tint. Yeah, I think he'd be my lucky charm. Again, it was not going good at all. And then it went really good. We won 500, and it was electric. It was electric. For how excited we were, it made up for all the money lost. So did you come out ahead? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We we would do the math because we didn't want to know. But we were like just high fiving, and we were like, Shoot, I mean, "We're gonna take our win, and we're gonna walk." The best part about that was that you were in. I mean, there's certain bars you could be at and win big, and just scream, and no one would really care. They go nice, <laughs> and then you guys were in like a sushi I just restaurant. sushi like qu- quiet. quiet. The people around you yeah. were there was no noise, just oh. little soft. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, and then, I definitely and wouldn't. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anyone gets into it. But Me neither. It was Most fun. the people that play are losers. I think all of them, especially Evan. Especially Evan. Evan, quit playing pull tabs. <laughs> He's giving us a stink guy right now. You know, it's funny because I think when you guys do that, that there's no worse usage of your money. I go, oh, these suckers. They lose every time. I watch you guys dump in all the money. And uh, I recently signed up for this thing. Uh, it's called Coin Tracker, and it, in, it it tracks what my crypto investments are doing. When you know, being a good kid, investing my money into something that can grow and flourish. I got a freaking update the other day. The market value. I don't even know. I didn't want to say this. So you did you just get this app that's yeah. gonna tell you your whole portfolio, the whole portfolio and up and, and down. Yeah. I didn't, I don't, I don't even really Dude, say this. Ryan's like, we might end up cutting this. He edits it, so you did I buy a lot of crypto. <laughs> I I've went pretty deep on 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 crypto. This is gonna give a little insight to where all my money is. The market value of my crypto is sixteen thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars. This isn't sounding good. Okay. I'm scared. Dude. My return on investment is negative thirty one thousand three hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> You've lost thirty one grand. I have lost thirty one thousand dollars investing in oh cryptocurrency. My gosh. Oh, wait, hold up. Is that how much you have invested in, or from the peak? No, 
that is how much money I have lost. <laughs> I'm like, speechless. I, I have, like, I have <laughs> lost that amount of money. Sixty. That's pretty tough. Dude. Down sixty five percent in the last year. The worst part As is of, you could have bought like a cool car mm-hmm. and like been fine. totally had. You could have bought a Lamborghini and dude, you're like, not lost. Your that Camaro on would be <laughs> going up in value more than. <laughs> yeah. So another thing is that. Are you like, no, I wouldn't call you like a sneaky investor. Obviously, you just do it on your own time, just a on bad your own one. phone. <laughs> just well, a bad you one. You know what I'm saying? But there's people who invest and talk about it too much. There's people who invest and talk about it. And then there's, you know, people who quietly invest. And I just never, I knew at one time you were pretty heavy in it. It's, it's at least as heavy as these two because you guys talked about it. Not too much, but uh, I didn't realize the extent of the investing. I didn't know you kept going, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing is, they say buy the dip. It kept so dipping. I just, I just, yeah, I kept buying. Bought and a lot of dipping. Dip. <laughs> Ryan bought a lot of yeah. dips. Yeah. Well, here's this. How about this? This will make you feel a little bit better. I saw this today. I'm kind of curious. So to see an mine. NFT that Logan Paul bought for six hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars. Okay. In 2021, is now worth ten dollars. Oh. So he lost wow. way more than you, but he also has. It, Way more, more money than money. you, dude. I thought that was so going to be probably like, comparable. Yeah, probably is. Yeah, I thought that was going to be like a positive story, and I'm like high risk, high reward. But that was no clearly the opposite, bucks. Yeah. dude. I, I think NFTs, and I maybe I'll end up biting my tongue later on, but Dumb. I've never quite understood them. It's not the it's picture. The utility it's of the utility. It. I get that. And I recently, but no one ever follows through with their utility that they promise. Well, I also I they don't, always say all this stuff like, "Oh, we're gonna do this," and if you own this NFT and you're part of our our group, you're gonna get access to this, and it always just crumbles to the ground. They have millions of dollars, and you never hear a peep from them again. And you're left with nothing. Yeah, it's definitely ridiculous, and most of the projects are totally gonna flop. I don't even know if it's the utility behind it, but it's definitely like I I still think there is something there. Like if a basketball or a football game ticket on your phone is an NFT versus just a scannable QR code. They have that, dude. Like when I go to went to the MGK concert, I had my tickets on my phone as an NFT. As an uh, NFT, different. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. It's just a digital ticket. <laughs> It's no, just, but no, I know that's you not what I'm saying. A ticket that's as not what NFT. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you can get a scannable QR code ticket, which is what you had, or like something like an NFT. And if it's like the best football game ever, then uh, they're saying that ticket might be worth something someday. If oh, it's, it's like, like having a frame the, stub or something like that. From frame the stub. Days. If you were to go and watch Michael Jordan play in a basketball yeah. game, is record-breaking game or something like that or like it's cool the miracle play for the vikes when stefan Diggs caught that one-handed right. maybe that's worth something as an nft so it's like i'm not really vouching for them because they are definitely ridiculous and especially like the stupid projects that logan paul like lost six hundred seventy thousand dollars on he was picking the good ones too but <laughs> but i i don't know I, I feel like there is something at least there and that's the, just one of many examples of more, the more unique ones. But I guess I just recently thought about this in like the last month. Okay, so you remember Dogecoin. That was all hype. And NFTs are basically hype. pumped hype. up by hype. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but that's what it is. Hype. Mm-hmm. You know, when Dogecoin got hyped up, everyone, some people were making crazy money. And when an NFT gets hyped up, some people make crazy money. Speaking of hype, I thought I ate my words on the last podcast a couple of weeks ago when the Vikings lost, uh, but now they're Ooh. winning again, dude. Yes. It's our year. And I think it's our year. After four wins, I'm we're getting definitely invested. allowed. We're, I think, are we allowed to say that? Five, dude, we're five weeks five? in. We're four and one, dude. We're top of the NFC North. We're going to win. We're going to win it all. <laughs> the real question, though, <laughs> is, is this the end of, like, how much deeper is this recession going to go, you know? Because we're totally in a recession right now. Oh, I thought... I was like, are we still talking about the Vikings? That still? was oh. a flip, CJ. Yeah. Whoa. I I was, was we're talking sure. about... Whoa. Can you imagine Whoa. the Vikings start winning the whole economy goes CJ. to shit? No, I'm talking back to, like, investing, I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, I no, wanted I to get that in, but yeah, everyone no, was talking. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're good. <laughs> I want to see that was even better. Fuck it, dude. I'll trade the economy for my Vikes to win. Sometimes, like, I don't get Let's something do in and I usually just bag it. <laughs> nah. 
but I felt like that hadn't passed. No, no, you were just no, fine. no, you were no. Good. Right. It's definitely <laughs> within the window. It was just so funny. It's funny. <laughs> I think we're going. I think it's got. I think it's getting a lot deeper. It's gonna hit the fan, dude. I guarantee. You after you mean the, the the floor. No, shit's going to hit the well, fan. Yeah, oh, shit will okay. be hitting the, the fan. The recession won't, though. It's going down. <laughs> no, the, economy. It, the recession's going to hit the fan and just... Explode. I don't know. Anyway, and then as they do, stupid. the Vikings are going to the Super Bowl. That was stupid. Anyway, uh, no, I think I, th- I think it's going to get way worse. Really? I think it's going to get worse. Like, how much worse can it get? It's I already have... pretty damn bad. Is it? I think it is. If Ken was in here, he'd know all the, like... Actual terms, he'd be like, "Oh, this is the worst thing." They're just not talking about it, type of thing. I think well, it's I, gonna get way worse, and they're definitely yeah, not talking about bad. it. It's it doesn't like seem that bad. Mass chaos yet? I don't think. It's weird because I think all the, I guess. I mean, what do you expect it to? It get, seems like the know. chaos lately has gone kind of down, but the recession has gone stronger. The inflation's got stronger. Interest rates are going up like crazy. Like I just bought a rental condo and had like six point seven percent. On the interest, which is super high. Yeah, I was gonna say the oh, last one was what, like three? It's like, yeah, it's pretty high. Double what? Yeah, yeah. Ken, he just walked in. In a short answer, are we in a recession? And is it bad? Yes. 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 Is it really bad, or is it only moderately bad? It's bad. It's bad right now. Should, is it gonna get worse? No. Ken says, "Who knows?" Should we panic? I no. just was talking about right. that. Dude. I've been buying the dip 30 grand ago. <laughs> Ken walks in and says, yes, we're in a recession. Yes, it's bad. Ryan says, what should we do? Ken goes, buy the dip. dip. Dude, I have so much queso and salsa and oh. guacamole. He's avocado. got all the dip. So are you still buying crypto, Buffalo Ryan? chicken dip. No, the last bit that I bought, it was on like the 4th of July or something okay. like that. 3rd of July. So he's I quit. bought I bought Ethereum at like 9.15. Oh, that was It doesn't good. seem dumb. Great buy. So yeah, it doesn't seem dumb. I mean, so you've had some one. wins in there too. Yeah, but the the coin that I bought previous before that was Ethereum at 4,000. So <laughs> Oh, okay. You just got to hold on. Yeah. And we'll just ride it out. Yeah. Ride the wave. Recessions are where like the majority of the wealth is created. Our recessions a scam created by rich people to make people more rich. It's maybe Ken, Ken says, says sure. Recessions are where a majority of the wealthy people excel. That's true, yeah. Hmm. Like in the like, crash two thousand eight, a bunch of people got rich, a bunch of people lost everything. And a bunch of people lost everything. If someone's making money, someone's losing it. Speaking of which with So who's making all the money with you guys' pull tab or uh pull tabs? Charity. It's, it's a charity, it's, it's a charity. donation. Luckily. I started oh. saving the the losing tabs and giving them to the accountant to write them off. They're you, charitable yeah, already, donations. You already filled up Each six individual. totes. Hmm. Taxes are going to be low this year, nice. along, along with my uh, bank account. My buddy Ken, he doesn't even pay him. Oh, is that how <laughs> <laughs> you avoid him? Ken's oh. giving us a look like stop Wait, talking about it. Who is the one C boy who forgot to pay their taxes one year? Maybe he oh, doesn't know dude, yet. Dude, so this is so funny, you guys. So I don't know why all my. All the tax uh, documents go to my mom's. I just need to change the address, but they go there. So she gets them to me when I see her, and she hands me a letter. Uh, she just got married last weekend, too. It was kind of crazy, but oh. uh, she hands me this letter as we're at the groom's dinner and was like, ah, hey, I've been meaning to give this to you. Guess what it was? What? She's like, it's from the IRS. I'm like, that's never fun. You know, it's the way she was coming off. And I was like... She's like, so I think they're auditing you. <laughs> no. No way? Yes way. They're auditing you? Yeah. Fuck. No, but I mean, it's, oh. it's it, like, there's nothing to, they're not going to audit you guys. They're auditing me for, because that was before, remember, that was when I had my own tax guy. And it, it specifically, it doesn't even, it just says um, specifically for like on your 1040 from 2020 line 11. Like I haven't even gotten a chance to look that up yet. But because she just gave it to me, but I'm being audited. And what that really is, is like you said, cool. yeah, I don't know. I'm like, it's so crazy that they, again, you know, how they know everything. Like if you're paying enough or not, not enough or whatever, and they know everything. But then they're like, hey, yeah, you fucked up. So like, uh, you know, figure whatever out you messed up and then let us know and we'll let you know if it's. And we'll see cool. you in jail. Yeah. So what, what year was that? 
so 2020. So it was like, so that was before we had, uh, Chris Eco, yeah. Yeah, doing our taxes and I don't know. I haven't gotten a chance to look at what line 11 is yet, but what the f- damn, oh, Mike, that was such a cool delivery. Yeah. And it was cool really as a just, cucumber. So then are uh, you bugging? Like, dude, it, Ken is sweating in his boots right now. He's the one who hasn't uh, been paying at all. <laughs> Ken is like, Oh shit. No, they can do that. I mean, am I like con? It's not like this, um, in the back of my head at all times. But when I think about it, like right now I'm getting like red and I'm like, I do have to like figure that out. <laughs> That's the worst part. You have to, you call them, they don't answer. Like, I mean, straight up. I'm not making that up. You call them again, they don't answer. Or you sit on hold or whatever. It's like, Do well, I guess they did hire 87,000 new IRS agents. And they so got hopefully, you. Yeah, hopefully we can get this figured out quick. I think I all of us Dude, are what are they nervous. doing with 87,000 new IRS agents? Busting people. I don't know. Left and right. Dude, I, I just had like a, a flash in my head, the title of the podcast. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yo, it was going to be our, it was gonna be our like $2.1 million fine for the track, but fuck, I yeah. guess. I mean, if Mike is going to jail with Ken. And then it, it was, so, there was like a small part of me that was like, damn, I'm getting audited. Pretty crazy. I mean, I'm talking like 1%, but. Wow. Wow, Mike. Uh, that is, that is slightly worrying. Well, I'm going to go. <laughs> is there any way we no. can get his name off the business? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, it's like like CJ well, I mean, being it, on the insurance <laughs> for <laughs> driving. For yeah. driving. I think if it definitely became a is problem. the same as Mike being <laughs> on the company for paying taxes. Mike, all you gotta you gotta pay your taxes, man. <laughs> CJ's been getting after me like in like a pretty mad tone. Oh, for not driving fast enough. <laughs> no, he just drives so slow. I go five miles per hour over the speed limit, and that is not Bro. enough for him. We went, we were in his Lamborghini, we left heydays before all of you guys, and we somehow ended up showing up last. You guys were <laughs> in trucks, towing fair, large trailers. A, I was driving a 40-foot RV pulling a trailer. Yeah. Oh, we and beat how back. the frick did Barkley, we? We stopped at Taco Bell. Yeah. Or maybe they go faster no. than me. I don't. I go five people that need to eat. Time. I go how? five miles no, per hour over the speed limit. It was how slow he was driving. I was just like... We're in a Lamborghini right now, and you can't drive at least a little faster. Like, there's certain spots where you can go fast. What is a little faster going to do, though? Where you shouldn't go fast. What's a little faster going to do? Get us home five minutes before, like, Made up great time with these guys. Don't speed. Run red lights. I didn't stop once. (laughs) Dude, (laughs) an RV. RV What were they going to do? I'm not saying (laughs) you driving wrong. It's just like, I couldn't believe. pretty mad about it. I couldn't believe how slow... He was driving. It was like to the books. I'm like, you're in a Lambo right now. We can't five even... miles per hour over the speed limit. So you're like, you're going sixty and a fifty five. Yeah, you're not gonna get pulled Everyone's over. Everyone's going then. sixty and a fifty five. I'm Great. not saying you need to go fast, fast. I'm just saying like, there were certain spots where it was like, okay, we could maybe go a little faster. Like we don't need to putts here. But did I just me. experience? I just okay. But you do. Do you realize what would happen if I were to get a speeding ticket? With a Lamborghini on my insurance at 23 years old, and a I, I think you'd be surprised. Ticket. I feel like it wouldn't really be that bad. I don't think it'd be that. Yeah, I bad. think you think What's it's like. Gu- I think you think what? it's like such a bad consequence that you I drive you don't so want careful. One, What's your guys's uh, monthly like car payment for insurance? Payment. So depends on what vehicle. For your GTR, 125 bucks. Mine. Wow. Mine is 450 without a single speeding ticket. Probably because you're driving a fucking house on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So exactly. Imagine how much worse it could be. I don't honestly. Mine's four ten. I drive a fucking Camaro. You guys act like I'm a hassle to the insurance. I'm, I'm assuming the cabriolet is pretty. Well, cheap. you are. You are <laughs> terrible. See, you have one, like the worst driving record of the anyone. Cheapest, cheapest insurance. That's pretty good. I, good for you. Got the wor- I don't know, dude. I have like. Let's see if I have any discounts. I don't know. I got him pulled. He's got like four lot. speeding tickets in the last year. One twenty-five for the multi-car. GTR. I think it's like one fifteen for the Evo, which is even crazier. The Mitsubishi Evo is like a quarter of the value of the GTR, and it's. I'm surprised. Literally ten dollars cheaper. So cheap. And or then my Raptor is. I don't even know Whoa. what the month yeah. month to month comes out to, but it's it's like seven hundred bucks a year. So nice. even less than that. So I mean, I was just like, it is really cheap, dude. The other day, CJ said to me, "I don't know, maybe it was. I don't know why you guys were. You were talking about basically this." CJ goes, 
All I'm saying is, like, if you drive 55 and a 55, like, I can't hang with you, man. I'm not driving with you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not about that, bro. I feel like everything else we do is pretty like risky, we so I'm not going to just drive like we were getting passed fast. by everyone, and then we got passed by our buddies in a motor home pulling a trailer, no, and that no, left after us. No, and I was like, they didn't. No, they didn't. Not physically. <laughs> no, at all. We got <laughs> home before. We got home before you. I would just chalk it up if I were no, you, you guys were and just here. say I don't want a ticket. And I think the way you drive is not going to get you a ticket. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, I mean, like, this is the thing, though, is I haven't gotten a ticket in quite a while, and I agree in the five over rule. There's times, maybe coming into a neighborhood, maybe even bump it a little bit less than five over, you know? Might be Jenny walking her dog down the street in the middle of the fucking county mm-hmm. highway. I have beef over that, but okay. Or, <laughs> and there's times you get, you get the downhill on the interstate, you can see for the next eight miles mm-hmm. you go all right maybe we'll bump it up to nine over and you just 20 over well no that's that's even a okay, lot sorry. i'd say 20 and then over. you <laughs> just you just get a little bit up but it's it's the like constant under under five over or under the speed limit that really can irritate when you're in a hurry it's just the like are we not trying i got mad at slim <laughs> yeah. evan's buddy slim because he was driving like under the speed limit and i was like slim Let's go. We got 18 hours. He was like, I don't want to get a ticket. Got places to go. Yeah, I got shit to do. There's no one out there. The road, there's not, no one. You can see. You don't got nothing to worry about. I think think there's logic behind both. Yeah, and I'm pretty neutral. I like to speed. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I just couldn't believe it that we were driving so slow in a Lamborghini. I hopped in the Lamborghini because I was like, we're getting home quick. I'm trying to get out of here. Mm. (laughs) Well, now you learned your lesson to never ride with me. Yep. <laughs> and that's why you should never ride with Ben. Even mm. if he's driving a supercar. You're gonna be you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there around two to three minutes slower, but you're gonna be safe the whole time. And he won't let you eat chicken wings. Oh, that, <laughs> that was the other thing. Mike hops in my car with chicken wings, bone in chicken wings, sauce all over the place, and I just go, hey. Can you maybe not eat chicken wings in my car? And apparently that was just the biggest deal. No. I mean, you <laughs> I were like, pretty I, salty I say, about it. No, I, I just, cannot that was my that. first time ever bringing it up. But I babe, couldn't believe that you would even think of asking that. Dude, it was so funny. Bone it, in wings? It was like a social yeah, That's like experiment. the messiest thing you could eat. Mm. But, On a plate, too, so they were just sliding oh, all over yeah, the place. Like, I was picturing it like your fingers, no, no, no. your hands are going to be all sticky and saucy. So like they, you're going to have to touch the door handle or I, something. I wouldn't have touched the door handle. How are you planning on getting out? Bro. L- wipe them all over myself before I touch the door handle, bro. Still not like clean. I want no, to wash were, your uh, hands. They, I had some leftover wings and like you know everything's running gun around here, so I just cooked them. Especially for you because you're a couple steps behind most of the time. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I mean it was just Ben and I here, and he's like, "All right, we got to go to Fargo." And I, I oh. just cooked these. I hadn't eaten yet, and I tossed maybe two in, and then I was like, "Eh, maybe he'll let me eat them in there." If but he didn't even let me explain it. But I was like, if I explain myself and I'm like, I hey, promise listen, I'll I'm be hungry. really careful. I'm I mean, hungry. Or yeah, if I it was just like, dude, fuck off. I'm hungry. But uh, I went in there and you're just like, I'm nah, dude. Mm-mm. <laughs> and then I'm like, but okay. So if I like, you know, I brought the, the paper towel. Mm-mm. Get food later. And then that was it. That, I think that was it. That's tough too, because it's like really, even if you did spill a little water, clean it right up. I would, oh, and that's but it's also thing. not my very expensive if I, car. No, if I spilled, I would have like yeah, I'd have been like, dude, why'd you let me? Yeah, whatever. Like, why'd you I, let yeah, me yeah, do yeah, that? That's yeah. what you'd have fucking said, no, Mike. No, I would not. But <laughs> Mike has spilled. Yeah. Seriously, Ben, why like, did you let me do that? You were supposed to protect me from this situation, dude. That you, oh, you got to pu- pu- push this picture up on the podcast because I think you guys would enjoy it because it's so cringy. But the. The well, I just put on my story, but basically the me and like the monster shirt and the monster hat and like the monster skateboard and like green pants, posing with the skateboard, mm-hmm. like and then what, I captioned it like, "Why didn't anyone stop me?" So uh, I think about my transitions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I just looked. So you were on like the badass side, and you were kind of on the nerdy side. Mm-hmm. And, but still, we both should have been stopped. Someone yeah. needed to intervene. You guys were on the extremes of both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I shouldn't say badass. I should say punk. Yeah, a for you. punk or whatever. But it's like just typical skater kid. And it's you like, could have been like a Tumblr boy with that. Yeah, almost. Remember Tumblr? And I was like, I almost look like I know what I'm doing. If people knew how bad I skated, they'd be like. That'd be the worst part. You carrying around <laughs> yeah. that skateboard. Can't even skate. You're a pretty good skater now, though. No, that's what, yeah, I, that was okay, but. I not good enough to be dressing that good. Not good enough to be wearing Monster. I always think about high school Mike, I and I resort to picturing him wearing, like, purple skinny jeans. I mean. Did yeah. you have purple skinny jeans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pull that picture up, yeah. too. Yeah, if we can find it. Yeah, I would wear, like, a white flannel and purple skinny jeans and, like, a rogue status shirt. <laughs> I'll probably skate to school from like my car. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna say you're just you just pushing so, down a gravel road. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I skated to school. It was either drive my tractor or skate to school. How many times did you drive your tractor? I drove it once for drive your tractor to school day. Was that actually a day? Yeah. Really? Drive your tractor to school day. How many people would pull up for FFA week? Uh, dude, 20, 25, let's say. Did anyone drive their lawnmower? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, people in town would drive their lawnmower. Their John so that's kind of fun. What about like a full-on combine? No one ever did that. That would <laughs> be awesome. Imagine? Can you drive your combine to bring your tractor to school day? Because that'd be cool. <laughs> I think you could. Should bring. Should have brought like a fertilizer, one of those things that sprays All the, the crops. Yeah. Then you could have had people driving underneath it. That'd be a sweet video shot, just like driving. We down do the need road to do that. We go under it. Big tractor meetup. I've been meaning so long for my grandpa gave me like a really old. John Deere tractor. I've been meaning so long to get it in a video and just do something dumb with it. Not like ruin it or anything. Just but a collectible, like yeah, not definitely not ruin it, but you know, like very have like a tug off with like, like sentimental, sentimental. <laughs> not thing. ruin it. I know. Let's whistle and diesel that up. shit. <laughs> yeah. Sen sentimental, sentimental, <laughs> dude. I've been messing up words, and the first person that corrects me usually is Ryan. <laughs> I didn't say anything there. I know, but you wanted to. I did. I wanted to. <laughs> you wanted to. And if Ken wasn't serious enough. And then Ken will there? follow it up very quickly, and then Mike will just be the cherry asshole on top. Dude, honestly, <laughs> I think that's good for you. If you were. That's fun. You know? <laughs> no, I know. It's funny. Like, someone's it's got funny. to. <laughs> hey, it makes me feel better because you guys do the exact same thing to CJ, too. I mean, yeah, basically, like, if anyone messes up a word. Yeah. The, the the normal thing to do is like I think that's what a good friend would do though. Yeah. Maybe our delivery isn't always the best. I just don't like it when we're like in something very serious trying to like get something done and you have to make a big deal about one of us saying a word <laughs> wrong. Like if it even no, it is, is pronounced a, yeah. slightly wrong, you're like It's pretty juvenile. It's just like, we, bro, like let's just carry on. We got some shit to do here. <laughs> and we're over here critiquing how you talk. Yeah, no, you're right. It is it's pretty juvenile. Uh I was trying to explain Trying to spell acknowledge. Mm, yeah, that is just a tough this one. morning. And I was just about, I was just in a rush and I was just going to, I knew it was spelt wrong. I was just about to send him. I was like, ah, I just don't want to give Ryan any ammo. No, I so don't do I the literally, group chat anymore. I literally looked up on there? Google. I literally looked up. I just like, oh, right. Of course. That's how you spell acknowledge. And I went and corrected it. So if you scroll back to my earliest message, I think I texted at like 701. I was like, none of these people are even acknowledging me. Someone else has to text them. And I had to double check that word, and I I did think of you more so. That is unfortunate. I wish you didn't think of me in such like, a negative way. But like, I I don't it think would be it fucking negative negative embarrassing. Way. Like, if one day you're doing the Today Show after we've done something good, true. and you're up there, and you're like, Very oh, true. we would 100. percent If it was me or CJ, we would 100 percent try and say something that's like a little bit smart. I'd be so we careful. Would mess it up. I wouldn't even try to say something <laughs> smart. I just would know, unless I really know what I'm talking about, but. Yeah, I mean, no, in the, on the bright side now, I know how to spell acknowledge, which I think I already did know. It just kind of slipped my mind. Dude, there's some words that... I was in a rush. I wasn't thinking in a negative way. I just was like, I just want to like get my point this. across and keep it going. I don't want to <clears throat> have to like go on this whole have tangent about how I don't know how to spell acknowledge. I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't think we do it in the group chat anymore. We used to, I know. Unless it's absurd, which, you know. Happens. Sometimes What's I can't control word? myself. If it's just absurdly spell absurd wrong, a b s u r d. Nice. Um, but uh, acknowledge is a good like example. Let's just say, uh, this is how we handle it, like absolute dicks. So Ryan or CJ says like acknowledge or something, 
And then in a conversation, they're, they're just talking, they're talking. It could even be a serious situation. And then Ben and I would look at each other and go, <laughs> acknowledge. <laughs> and we would just like say it back to each other. And then, yeah, we're just being bullies. We could be in like the most time crunch situation though, where it's like <laughs> someone could be fucking hanging off a cliff. I'm like, like help save him. And you guys be like, oh, he said this word. He wrong. said him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, like, like <laughs> save him. <laughs> fucking Ken's hanging off a cliff. Uh, at least we're keeping things light around here. <laughs> I just royally messed up a word today. I can't think of what it was. It was bad, though. <laughs> it was so bad. I, yeah, I can't remember. I think CJ might have even tried <laughs> it on that one. I didn't say shit. <laughs> I'll try to write down tomorrow's fuck up. Okay. Uh, all right. Should we wrap? Yeah, we can wrap it up. Beautiful time, boys. That was fun. Feels good to be back on here. Yes, yeah. I'm with the boys. That was. Uh, thanks for listening and watching. Uh, we'll be back next week and the week after that. And comment. if we get to 150K, we're going to have Evan on and he's going to speak. <laughs> yeah, dude. He, he, hey, he did a great job on the last podcast. He said three things. He did. And you know what? My, uh, the first podcast that we ever did, I didn't talk either. I know the feeling. The less you talk, the harder it gets to say a word. Yeah. I feel for him. He did a great job. He's a good kid. 150K, he'll speak. Subscribe. Beautiful. End and out. Beautiful. Beautiful.